Hi, folks. We're going to give a couple of minutes for everyone to, to have the chance to log in. Um, but as you're joining us, find the, the chat box and the Q&A box. We're going to be using these throughout the session. And maybe in the chat box, just drop us a quick note and let us know where you're joining us from today. And if you're at home, where, where's your home office? All right, we'll just give another minute or so and then we'll get started. Um, but as you're joining, just drop in the chat, let us know where you're working from. Where's your home office today? Looks like we have people calling in from Okayama, uh, uh, oh, I'm in California, Harajuku, Saitama, Tokyo. Awesome, nice to see you all. Home office is my dinner table. Same here, same here. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually relegated to the kitchen table, but today for this discussion, I get to be in the in the quiet office space in the guest room. Congrats, that's a that's <laughs> <enough> great. <laughs> Moving up in the world. Awesome. All right. Well, we have this precious hour. Um, I know that for those of you who are joining us here in Japan, you're spending your lunch hour with us. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, roughly, we're gonna try to make sure that we leave some time towards the end for Q&A. So as we're going, please put any questions that you might want Christy or I to answer at the end of the session in the Q&A box. We'll make sure that we can separate those out from anything else that's happening in the chat. So. Keep those questions there. You don't have to save them to the end. Um, one of the, the team members here will help to kind of sort through those and, and pull out questions that we can answer when that time comes. But um, in the meantime, I'm gonna get us started. So thank you again for joining us. This webinar today is on the topic of realigning your 2021. And this topic came up for us, even towards the end of last year, we were thinking that it would be helpful for people to have the chance to reflect a little bit on the goals that they've set for this year. And I find that there's roughly three camps when it comes to goal setting. You have the handful of people who are like on it. You know, they have their goal plan, they're working on it, they know what they need to do. Um, then you have another group of people who started out with really big goals and by this point in the year, they've already let them go. <laughs> um, and then that third camp of people I find is the folks who don't really know how to go about setting a goal. Maybe they were even hesitant to set a goal for 2021. 2020 really didn't treat them well and they don't know how optimistic they wanna be. Um, but I think for any of those folks, there's potentially something to pick up from today's session. So we're really excited to, to dive into it um, and get started. So we'll introduce ourselves in a bit more detail as we go, but I, I'm Christine um, and we'll be presenting today uh, with my, my co-panelist, my co-coach here, uh, Christy as well. Yeah, Christy, hi everyone. Your, your intro. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's, um, let me just go ahead and just share a little bit about myself. So my name is Christy Ishii and um, I'm originally from California. If anyone's been to the West Coast, I went to school at UCLA in Los Angeles. And I currently run one-on-one um, -on -one programs to support people who are changing jobs and who are also, you know, discovering new career paths that maybe um, are a little bit different from what they're doing originally. And I, in this coaching program, I used, you know, methods taught by um, a program out of Santa Monica in California that works a lot more on like the deep dive inner mindset work before creating that career roadmap um, and getting into the job hunting mode. And I'm also the JCL, Japan Chapter President, which is a nonprofit organization um, right now based in, in Tokyo. It's a branch of a US NPO that focuses on social justice in the United States. So that's another little tidbit about myself, but I'm really excited to chat with you a bit more about coaching, what it means to us and, and about goal setting as well. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Christy. I'll give you um, a quick introduction to myself and, and also to Wall and Case. So my name is Christine Aizawa. I am the talent manager here at Wall and Case. So I'm looking at hiring, learning and develop and performance management programs. Um, and Wall and Case is a tech recruitment company here in Tokyo. We work with a lot of startups as well as um, larger firms in the tech space, Gaishke, um, Nikkei companies as well, a mix of Japanese and international. And we were chatting just before we started the webinar today about whether it would be a bit of a mystery to people why a recruitment company um, was running a, a webinar on the topic of goal setting. And it, it felt natural to all of us, to be honest, because when we're working with people on making successful hires, you know, developing and growing their teams, or in making a career change um, as a job seeker, one of the big things that can come up that's really important to successful um, decision making on all sides there is knowing what you want and where that role is going to take you um, or what's needed from this person throughout their career. So I think that from the perspective of successful recruitment, goal setting and clarity around some of the topics that we'll discuss today will definitely be helpful. But also we've learned, whether it's internally at Wall and Case or, or through working with um, thousands of people over the years and changing their job, that you can't really separate who you are and what your goals are in your private life, from your work life, from your time at the gym. We're, we're just one person. And the thing that we, I think, really realize as we start looking at how all these things intersect is that being able to set goals and have a clear idea about what we're working towards really lifts us up in all those different areas of our life. So we hope that it's helpful to you, whether you are changing your career or just looking to feel a little bit better in your job or in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and we'll go through a bit more detail on that going forwards from here. Um, all right. I want to make sure that I, I remind everyone again, because I think we're having more people come in. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the Q&A box and we'll answer them a little bit later. And in the meantime, please feel free to use the chat as we go along. All righty. So Chrissy, I want to talk a little bit about just an introduction to coaching, because this is a term that I think it gets interpreted in a, ride, a wide variety of ways. What does coaching mean to you? Yeah. Um, and before before I get into that, I do want to drop a question in the chat, something like um, I want to ask people, you know, have you ever worked with a career coach before? And you can just type yes or no, or maybe maybe I've thought about it or I've had an experience as we kind of um, share with you what we feel in our practice coaching looks like. That way you can kind of um, identify if this has been an experience you've had or not, because sometimes it is kind of foggy. Um, so going back to intro to coaching, um, I so coaching to me has been much more of like a, a co-creation experience. Like I'd be talking to somebody um, and I'm not looking for, you know, like a, a task list of things to do. I'm kind of doing like a internal like deep dive. I wanna like see different perspectives of something that I've been, you know, looking at and sitting with for a really long time um, and, and have a lot more of a, I don't know, co-creation, like brainstorm, if you will, um, to help me identify what I'm looking to do and how, like what I need to do to get there on my own terms for the type of person and the type of like motivations that I have. Um, but what about you? What's your experience with, I guess, the word and, and coaching itself? Yeah, I think that, I think it's probably changed for me a lot over the years. And the way that I look at coaching now is, is very similar to what you described. I think of, I think of it as a process of creating space for exploration. I think that when people get a lot of success from coaching, it's because they have some idea of what they want to change or um, something in their life that they think could be better, but maybe they're not 100% clear on what steps to take in order to get there um, or exactly how to make those changes that maybe they, they want to make, but they're having a hard time sticking with. And I think a coach is, is a great resource because this is someone who will 
essentially hold up the mirror for you and, and ask you questions that you might not ask yourself um, to spend time exploring a bit more of your own personal development, a little self exploration. How are you seeing yourself? What are you learning from the experience? And, and I think through that, just that act of approaching things differently, of thinking or talking about them in a different way, it can bring it can bring up new ideas. And um, and I find that I used to think of coaching as being someone who is like an expert telling you what to do. Um, and as I got into coach training and starting to learn more about the way it's approached professionally, I found that some coaches do do that. It's a little bit more of a mix of consulting or mentorship or training. Um, but in a lot of cases, coaches will approach the situation from the perspective that you are the expert in your life. And yeah. the coach can be curious and interested in asking you questions to draw out insights, but they're not there to tell you what to do. And that was a big change for me from what I expected maybe before I got into coaching. Yeah, and I think some folks also, I'm, I'm seeing some comments in the chat where people have had like a trial, trial run and um, sometimes it is helpful, sometimes it really isn't for some folks, depending on what the intention was, was at the time of that session. But I think it'd be really awesome to share with folks like, the, um, what coaching is and what coaching isn't, because I do recognize that there are some people who um, have never had the coaching experience. So maybe we can go through um, that a little bit too. And so maybe... I've got a definition here from the ICF. The ICF is the International Coaching Federation. Um, and they define coaching as partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. The program that I studied in said they thought maximize was too limited, like exceed, expand. <laughs> like a lot of coaches are saying, go beyond what you think is possible for yourself and, and aim there. Oh. Um, but I think that this is a good basic summary or definition to work with. Um, but here's some other thoughts that, that we came up with in terms of clarifying what coaching is versus what maybe it isn't. Yeah, then I think these are these are really, you know, general um, interpretations, but they're very, very important as far as if you're looking to work with a coach and you want it to be a successful experience. Um, coaching is really great for somebody who is going in with an intention from the beginning, right? Um, sometimes it's, it's hard to have goals um, already set before you meet a coach. So sometimes it might be for somebody who wants to create a really solid goal. Um, but but a lot of times coaching is is a lot more kind of it's it's easier to find a good match in a coach if you know what you are looking to get coached on. So it doesn't have to be the exact goal, but if it's career, if it's life, if it's you know a very specific niche thing, there are coaches that are better for certain situations than others. Um, but it's also good for people who are flexible and looking forward to kind of like a lot of personal growth and deepening their awareness around things because the hardest thing to do as a coach is, you know, talk to somebody, try to give new perspectives on something and be kind of shut out. That There's not a whole lot you can do on a coach's side um, if you're working with somebody who, you know, is looking for a really kind of structured thing. But maybe you can also tell us about what coaching isn't a good or who who it's not a good fit for. Yeah, absolutely. I think that if you're looking to be told what to do, as, as I said a, a couple of minutes ago, I think coaching is not necessarily the, the right fit for you. Um, solutions or ideas or potential approaches can come up quickly, but it's not necessarily a Band-Aid solution where you're going to get like the one mysterious secret way to unlock the universe. And I, I would just be suspicious of anyone who promises you that, that that's what they can offer as a coach because it that change has to come from within us. So along those lines, if it's a, a really rigid training program, a one size fits all approach where, um, where you can just kind of like plug in this method and go, I would say that's maybe more in the category of a training or something mm. like that than it really is in coaching, which is more driven from, from you, from what you need or want or decide to do yourself. Um, and I also always like to mention, it's not really a replacement for therapy or 
counseling either. There is an element of coaching and talking things through that can sometimes be similar. Um, but the distinction that I tend to make is that therapy is a bit more diagnostic. It's looking at a place of sometimes repair, you know, looking at something that might be broken or holding you back and, and trying to fix that element of something in your past. Um, coaching is a little bit more forward looking. And sometimes there's elements of, you know, what worked for you before or what have you learned from your past experiences, but a lot more of it is looking at, okay, what are you going to do now with that information? Um, so I think if it's a situation where you, where you need help, where you're feeling unhealthy or unfit from maybe a wellness perspective that getting that taken care of before you dive into a coaching program would probably make the coaching a better experience and utilize knowledge and expertise. That's a bit different from the coaching approach as well. Yeah. And I, I just, I think I just want to add to, um, there are a lot of words out there like, like mentorship and, um, tutoring and, and I don't know, I think for me, at least in my experience with coaching, I've hired my own coach as well when I was um, starting up my business, because I actually really was looking for somebody who I could keep accountable with beyond just myself. Um, because starting a business is very difficult and a lot of people like self-doubt can come in, um, some things you know might pop up that you can't or at least i couldn't speak to my personal friends and family about because it just wasn't in it wasn't in the territory of conversation that we were comfortable talking about so for me coaching has been extremely helpful and beneficial um in me achieving my goals um and and keeping accountable to myself like and so i think coaching is is fun because not only um, is it just during the time that you're with a coach that you start to learn new habits and ways to keep yourself accountable, but ideally, and this is just my, in my interpretation, ideally, like after you have this time spent with a coach, I do like three month containers. I don't really do like one off sessions because those are really hard to um, keep accountable and like implement new ways to do things. But after that container, ideally, you'd be able to then carry these, you know, things with you that you learn from the coach so that unless something really big comes up and you're starting a business or whatever, if it's just a career change, then you can you can essentially use those tools you learned from that coaching experience and be able to right like get through the blocks yourself. So that that would be kind of my goal, like when I'm working with people. Um, so, yeah, lots of lots of words out there that are similar, but I think. This is a great list if you're looking to see if coaching is a good fit for you or not. Absolutely. And I was just looking in the chat as well. And I see that some folks have said, look, like I've worked with a coach and I found that the advice that they gave me wasn't that useful. And others are saying coaching isn't advising. And, and I think that that's, it's, it's an important thing to consider. And, and one thing that I'll just mention is that coaching is not a regulated term. You know, if you are, in the US, I mean, I'm American, so I'll fall back on that. But if you're in the US and, and you're, you know, a licensed family and marriage counselor or something like that, that's a very specific thing. And it, it has a very particular meaning. If you're a CPA, that means very some, something very specific within the accounting world. Um, and coaching is a more unregulated term in that way. And because of that, you do find that the approach and the style of each coach might be a little bit different. So you might talk to someone who would contradict what Christy and I are saying completely and say, I am a coach and I am going to tell you what to do. Yeah. And so I think if you are going out in the world and you're looking for a coach, it's good to try to get an idea of what you're looking for, um, what type of approach is going to be the most useful to you. And there's lots of places you can search around, um, whether it's YouTube and Instagram for places where you can hear coaches talking. I mean, Clubhouse is a place where a lot of coaches are out there talking right now as well. Um, but even just looking at people's websites, Google searching around, you might find that there are certain models or approaches that align with what you are looking for. The ICF is another great resource for coaches who tend to approach things as we're discussing from the goal of empowering rather than telling um, or directing. Um, and so that can be a place to look for coaches who have been trained or meet a certain um, qualification standard. So I think just like looking for a job, just like any other process where you're going to evaluate what's the best fit for you, 
you want to look at the match in terms of your communication style, your personality, um, the type of approach this person is taking in terms of their philosophy and schedule a call with them. I don't know of any coaches who don't offer free calls where you can have you know, a 20, 30 minute conversation with them um, and ask those questions so that you know what approach that person is taking before you, you really get started with them. Yeah, and then just last couple questions. I know um, they most coaches do and should do these like kind of intro sessions, but I do want people to know that a lot of times those are not actual coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. Those are more like get to know your coach. It's kind of like a matchmaking session because coaches also want to make sure that they can support you fully in 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 what your goals are. And it's it's really hard to go into that session with an expectation of being coached if the person has no idea who you are. And so just keep that in mind as well, um, that oftentimes it's just an intro to the coach um, and a little bit of in, like insight and experience of being coached, but it's not like a full on session. So that might be why some folks have not had a really good experience on that trial session, because it is again, not a coaching coaching session. It's like a get to know your coach type of session, um, but may, might not be clearly um, defined in, in the text. So um, yeah, but I do think it is like finding a job, just you know, finding the right match and stuff. So thanks, Christine. Yeah, of course, no, that's a great point. I think it's not necessarily the kind of situation where you'll get a result in that first 20 minutes. It might take a little more time. All right. We, we want to talk about goal setting as well, but talking about coaching is an important precursor because the approach that we're taking to exploring goal setting is very much from a coaching perspective. And so the, the tools and the exercises that we'll use over the next couple of minutes to, to take you through the process of realigning your goals for 2021 is based on this coaching mindset of saying, look, there's lots of tips and tricks and hacks and approaches for writing goals. Everyone's heard of smart goals and, and things like that. And so we're not here to teach you uh, that kind of methodology. Instead, we're gonna take you through a process that's a little bit more introspective. Um, so before we start those exercises, we're gonna talk about some goal setting stumbling blocks. Um, but maybe let's ask another question for the chat before yeah. we start talking. So I do, I want to ask folks in, um, in the audience, like, what are your biggest challenges around goals? We got a few good questions in the registration, but um, if you are comfortable sharing that, we'd love to see kind of what that looks like for you. Um, so your biggest challenges around goals and, and we'll kind of go through um, some of the stumbling blocks together too, as you're typing those in. Christy, what's your biggest challenge? You're somewhere. My, my biggest challenge um, is often setting setting too many, too many goals. Like in the beginning of the year, I make a make a nice long list of a bunch of things that I do want to change. Um, but it is it's overwhelming, oftentimes to have to, you know, tick off all these different check boxes and starting a new habit, right? It takes takes a, like a X amount of days to really have that settle in and be effective. And so um, that's one of my biggest stumbling blocks. Um, what about you? Maybe I alluded to this earlier on because it's top of mind for me, but my, my biggest challenge personally was always trying to segment things and say like, here's what I'm trying to do in my work life and here's what I'm trying to do in my family life and here's what I'm trying to do for my personal development and over there is what I'm trying to do for health and wellness. And I realized that I was trying to separate things that realistically I couldn't pull apart as easily as I was telling myself and that tension I think was giving me more stress trying to keep yeah. track of everything um, yeah. than if I just sat down and said, okay, looking at everything all together. Yeah, look, and, and um, some of these comments, actually, I relate to this a lot. Um, somebody mentioned that the goal is a little bit more dreamlike and it feels mm -hmm. unattainable. So I th I'm really excited to get into some of the things we're gonna talk about. And we're also gonna do some reflection and clarity before we get into the goal setting because um, a lot of what happens in like trying to keep up the motivation to successfully achieve a goal is it has a lot to do with whether or not you actually believe that that's what you want, if that's going to help you in life and making sure that all of those things are aligned makes it a lot easier to keep up that motivation. Um, but sometimes like some of the comments I totally relate. It's like you said, a, you said like a, a dream, like maybe it feels unrealistic. And so if you think it's unrealistic, right? naturally you're not gonna be able to 
find the you know stepping stones to get to that goal and how how to bite size it down but i guess we can we can also go into that too um some of these stumbling blocks that we've identified already um, here we go i think there we go they're just gonna all fill in together yeah so kind of like we were talking about um and some of the comments are already highlighting this already but um you know, instead of starting off with a really broad kind of dream like um, overwhelming like life changing goal, trying to make it a little more bite sized and and break it down a bit more. And so and you have your end goal, your, your large goal, but what needs to come before that needs to come before that and kind of breaking that down does make it a lot easier to attain. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I hear a lot that people are struggling with goals. And, and this even comes up this year where people are saying, oh, I don't know what goals I can set because the world is uncertain. I don't know what's gonna happen with the pandemic and things like that. So try to shift rather than looking at a goal where a lot of external factors have to go your way. You know, Everything has to line up to make yeah. it possible. Try to focus on goals that you can be 100% accountable for that the result is fully in your hands. Yeah, yeah. That's so relevant, especially to 2020, but also 2021, because I think, um, I don't know if, if that other people are late or if you were late, but it's, it. I think a lot of folks felt maybe 2021 was gonna be the year of change, things are gonna go back to normal, but clearly, um, you know, there are things out of our control. So making sure that, you know, we are focusing on stuff that we can actually accomplish on our own without having to rely on external factors. Um, Another thing too that I find comes up with clients, but um, also just just in the workplace as well from from previous experiences, um, focusing on kind of like the negative framework around our goals, like oh, like I wasn't able to do this, and I wasn't able to to finish it this week, and and kind of kind of beating yourself up, I guess, if you will, um, for for not achieving the goal and how that kind of cycles and it turns into just like a rabbit hole of like, oh gosh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be able to do this. Um, but instead of that framework, kind of focusing more on how achieving this goal is going to have a really big impact on your life, like directly. Um, and so we'll get into that a little bit more during the the workbook though, on on making sure the goals are actually things that will impact your your life. Um, in a positive way yeah yeah and related to that when you are really strict on what your definition of success or achievement is if you're in that mindset that you're looking out for signs of failure or proof that this is going to be hard or even like dangerous not if not physically but to your your self-esteem or your vision of yourself as someone who is good at these things or someone who achieves their goals sometimes that can hold us back from setting goals that are a little bit bigger or scarier mm -hmm. or give us a reason to kind of jump ship you know you you get out i don't know i'm going to take the ship metaphor for a couple of seconds but like you you get out to sea and you realize like the conditions are rougher than you thought like it's closer to swim to shore if you bail early so sometimes if you are worried about what challenges you might be facing up ahead, it can lead to giving up at the first signs of struggle. Like this is proof I can't do this. Um, but finding an accountability partner or using that growth mindset, um, staying attached to the impact that it can have, as Christy was mentioning, can also be helpful in building that persistence or resiliency to, to bounce back or stick with things even when they're uncomfortable. Yeah, and then I think the last thing I wanna say on this part is like making sure that this goal is something that's important to you and not a goal that's coming from like an external um, pressure in like society or in the family and things like that because that can definitely um that that can kind of deter people's motivation to do something if it's if it's really not your personal goal and it's something yeah external coming in yeah if it's a goal that you think other people want you to have but there's that internal but for you, but I don't care about this, but I don't know if I can do it, then that's what your brain is going to pay attention to, right? So I, I think that when you can shift away from looking at what's wrong um, and focus on goals in a more positive way, like one little thing that I've heard a couple of times is that it's a lot easier to create a new habit than it is to break 
an old one. And I think that it's just a little bit easier for, for our minds to be excited about doing something that we feel is good for us than it is to scold ourselves about something bad that just doesn't lead to the same behavioral change or motivation as looking forward to something positive might. Yeah, totally agree. Um, maybe beyond that. So, let's see. Right. So I think that um, we've dropped into the chat a link to the the webinar workbook, and if you don't have it downloaded yet, if you're hearing this and you're freaking out, like don't stay with us. Don't don't rush around and try to find it. We'll put the questions up in the slides as we go along. Um, but this is yours, and you can go back and use it whenever you'd like. I saw some chat about um, the recording. It will be available afterwards. So going back through this process again, filling in this workbook or, or following this framework, anytime you want to realign your goals, it doesn't have to be for the year. It can be for a day when you're feeling off balance, you know, a month, whatever, however you want to approach this. Um, you can always adjust these timeframes to, um, to be a better fit for you. But we are gonna shift gears a little bit and kind of come out of um, telling you what we want to share with you and to creating a space that's a little bit more reflective. So just before we dive into this, you know, we can't give you guys an hour to sit in a quiet room by candlelight and do this. We, we do need to kind of move through it in the next 15 to 20 minutes to, to take you through the process. But if you can join me just for a second in sitting up straight wherever you are, putting your feet on the floor, and just take a couple of deep breaths with me. Um, we wanna shift gears so that you're in a place where you can reflect a little bit and follow the prompts that we're going to share with you. Um, and you're not gonna have a ton of time. So you might just be scraping the surface and that's okay. Um, but just to kind of get into that headspace, let's just take two or three deep breaths. Try to fill your belly. We'll do just kind of like, a four second inhale and a four second exhale, all right? So feet on the floor, hand on your chest and your stomach if you'd like, you can close your eyes, no one can see you. And just breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. One more, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. And the last one, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. All right. Thank you so much, Christine, yes. for that. Really, really appreciate that. And so um, just gonna give you a couple more seconds to get that that free download, if you don't already have it, Brian put um, the link right there into the chat. Um, and again, what, like Christine said, we're probably gonna go through this a lot, a, mo a bit more quickly than, than we would normally um, in a full hour session. So we're gonna allot about one minute per question. And if you don't finish writing your answer, you can always come back to it in your own time, um, watch the recording, pause and replay. So we just want to guide you through the questions so that you have an idea of um, how to start this on your own. And so don't panic if it feels too quick. Um, so I'm going to go through this starting with the reflection page. Um, and I'm going to give you about a minute, minute and a half of time to just think about and write your answers. And you can drop in, even if you wanna drop in your answers into the chat, see what other people are writing as well. If you have time to do that, that's totally cool as well. Um, otherwise, you know, for anything else that comes up, feel free to reflect on this and, and take your own time to um, go a little bit deeper. So let's start with um, looking, looking back on 2020, looking back at the past year. And my question to you is, what do you want to stop doing that you were doing in 2020? So what do you want to stop doing now that we are in 2021? And feel free to drop in the chat as well if you do kind of want to share.
Yeah, I love what was dropped in the chat. Think about negative outcomes. So stop thinking about negative outcomes is what this person wants to do. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Mm, sleep. If I could give everybody an extra 30 minutes of sleep, I think I could improve your quality of life a few percentage points at least. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes, I totally relate. <laughs> okay, and if you're already moving on to the next ones, you can do this as well. Um, but looking back on the past year, what do you want to start doing that maybe you weren't doing in 2020? So this one's, this one's quite, you know, unique to the person. I, I think a lot of folks might have different goals that, that line up with this. So this can both be career, this can be life, this can be relationships. I mean, I know we're in a, in a career kind of setting, but again, this is for your own reflection. Um, so what is it that you want to start doing that maybe you weren't doing before? I actually think I'm going to share something that I want to start doing in 2021. Um, I've started to actually set like a morning and evening routine. I haven't been able to do it every single day, but it has been in the morning kind of like um, a little bit of meditation and a journal entry if I can get it in. And the evening is like a gratitude journal. So just kind of writing three things that I'm like super grateful for that happened that day. Um, but that's something that I've that I want to start and have started doing in 2021. It's a great way to bookend the day. Yeah. You're not alone, Chrissy. I see in the comments, people wanting to start meditating more. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's so, oh gosh, yeah. It's just, I think what's funny too, like when I heard about it, like in college and, and before, my understanding of meditation kind of seemed to be like, I don't know, a bit more spiritual. Mm but I really recognize it's just like slowing down and just being in the moment. And it, it doesn't have to be, you know, a whole production of, I don't know, it's just simply, <laughs> you know, just creating space for yourself. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, gratitude. I don't know what you call it, but I've heard gratitude journal, um, mm -hmm. like sentence, bullet sent bullet journals just, just bulleting things not even writing full sentences but um there's something about recognizing things that we're grateful for i think that that gives up some positive vibes um absolutely the the yeah and so the last part of this question is you know looking back on the past year what do you want to continue so i don't know christine do you have anything that that you've wanted to pull pull to 2021 from 2020 <laughs> I think that when we first shifted to remote work, I was really happy to not have to commute anymore. I ride on a really busy train that goes through central Tokyo. It's like over an hour door to door. Um, and I was excited to lose that part of my routine. But as the year went on, I realized that I missed it. Not, not riding the train like a sardine, but that transition time in my day and getting out and walking around for an hour on my way to and from work. Um, so I started taking myself out for long walks, um, especially in the morning, if I didn't have meetings right away, to go walk around for an hour, an hour and a half and listen to podcasts or audiobooks like I used to on the train, um, just to get that movement and that fresh air and the vitamin D, but also to have the transition time in my day. I'm, I'm a working mom, I've got two little kids, and I realized that riding the train was one time of day when I wasn't responsible for anybody. And that was something that I lost. Um, so I go for a walk by myself and I'm not the one who's responsible for my kids. I'm not at my laptop doing work. It's, it's a time just for me. So I've been sticking with that this year. That's awesome, that's awesome. 
And so a lot of reflection, the last two questions that I want to pose to folks is, you know, what is the biggest lesson you learned? Um, this might take some time, so feel free to <laughs> maybe put some notes, but you don't have to flesh this out right now. So the biggest lesson you learned and what are you proud of accomplishing? Kind of more emphasis on this last question. If you do want to spend the time to like right in this moment to think about it, what are you proud of accomplishing in the past like year or so or month, whatever time frame you feel is is right for you? Um, because I think so often in a personal reflection, like I definitely know that my mind can wander towards the things that maybe I didn't do so well the past year. So I want to improve the next year. Um, but a lot of times we don't celebrate our wins and I think it's it's a good time to do that especially when you're setting goals and you can really see where you kind of like say told and like where, where you're growing and and you know be proud of that and it'll help you kind of like build on those goals absolutely and health is very important <laughs> for mm. sure Somebody wrote that the biggest lesson they've learned is that health is everything. That's yeah, that was the neon I, light for 2020, right? Just yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so again, we are going to go through this a bit more quickly. Um, moving on to the clarity page, I know um, this is going to feel a bit rushed, but I just want to put the questions out there for you to start thinking about them. Um, the next page is clarity. And so my question to you is like, what excites you and makes you feel the most alive? You can bullet this, um, you, can, you can write words, you can write sentences, um, but what makes you feel most alive? And it can be anything. It can be at work, it can be at home, it can be in your hobbies. And then as you're thinking about that, um, at the end of the year, this is kind of long term. So at the end of like 2021, um, or in the next three months, whatever your time frame, how do you want to feel? Um, there, that, you know, comes up in kind of an, an emotional sense or um, just kind of more like in, in your heart and soul, like what, how, yeah, how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel accomplished? Do you want to feel content? Do you want to feel healthy? Do you want to feel, you know, there's, there are a lot of words that you could use for this. Um, but so often I think we, when we talk about goals, it's like, what's our target objective number? Like quantifying things or how much money do I want to make like in the next three months? But focusing a little bit more on the the emotional side. <laughs> yeah, not only what do you do, but who are you? What do you want to be and how do you want to experience the year? And then segueing into the next question, um, by the end of the year, in the next three months, what do you want to have created, achieved, or worked towards? And what would make this year a success for you? So this is this is a little bit more of a deep dive, um, but it kind of makes your goal a little bit more tangible um, in that you can, you can kind of see and outline um, what, you know, what it will look like when you are successful. Because a lot of times we think about, okay, I set a goal, but if it doesn't work out, then I got plan B. <laughs> or, um, you know, oh gosh, this is, this is a goal I want to achieve. And if I don't, like I failed. But a lot of times we kind of don't visualize and we, we don't think about like, what does a successful me look like? Or what does it look like if I successfully, when I successfully uh, achieve my goal? So that's kind of where this, this question is coming from. And then once you've kind of figured out a little bit more clarity in your goals, um, prioritizing the goal and, and choosing the ones that are most relevant for you, like in the current space and time that you're in, um, whether it's, it's, you know, career, life, relationship, faith, whatever it is, making sure that what feels the most in need 
right now is the one that you focus on because staying motivated depends on whether or not you find it to be a priority or not. And so identifying that through this reflection and clarity piece will definitely help you um, in tackling the next session or the next part of the session, which is a lot more of the planning stages that you'll do with Christine. So yeah, that was, Thank you. I love these, yeah. Thank you though. <laughs> so in, in planning your goals, we're gonna follow a framework called WOOP, W-O-O-P. And WOOP is a little bit different from some other goal setting methodologies or frameworks. Um, as I said, it's not, it's not just about creating a good goal metric like the SMART goal. That, that's valuable for defining things that you need to be measurable. WOOP is asking you to step back and to visualize things, um, to, to imagine what you want to achieve. And then from that, putting it into words and defining your actions. Now we're gonna run through this, but I think that this is a good tool for you to come back to and you can use it again, not just for your 2021 year long goals, your career goals or these kinds of huge things, but you can use it for something more short term as well. There's a lot of flexibility in, in how we go through this. So let's see. When we go through WHOOP, the very first thing that you're going to do is think about your wish. So whatever time period you're thinking about for your goal setting right now, ask yourself, what is the, the dearest wish that you would like to fulfill? This is something that should feel challenging to you, but it's reasonably possible that you'll be able to achieve this thing in the time frame that you're working towards. What, what do you want to achieve? And just write this down. It can just be a couple of words, but I think a short sentence um, will probably give you the best idea here. All right, once you have your wish, we're gonna shift to outcome. And so the outcome is basically the best outcome that you could experience from fulfilling your wish. Um, how would fulfilling your wish make you feel, okay? So the wish is the thing that you want to fulfill or achieve, and the outcome is what it will be like when you've done that. So you're envisioning that success and how you will feel from that place of fulfillment or completion. Okay. For some people, that's the easy part. For some people, that's the hard part. Um, what I like about the WHOOP methodology is that it really forces you to explore all the different pieces um, of achieving a goal. Now, some people have asked, how do I take these big dreams and break them down into something where I can actually take action? Um, or how do I keep going when things get hard? And this obstacle section of the WHOOP approach is where we really get into that. So here you're asking yourself, what is it within you, again, within your control that holds you back from fulfilling your wish? What is in that obstacle that might stop you? So this might be an emotion. It might be an irrational belief. It might be a bad habit. But ask yourself a bit more deeply, what is it really? What's the, what's the real challenge for you What's your inner obstacle in achieving this wish? Just try to define that obstacle again in a couple of words or in a sentence, okay? Again, if you do this on your own, whether you journal or you talk it out with someone, ideally you'll spend a bit more time on it but I wanna make sure we can answer a couple of questions. So the, the last part of the WHOOP framework is planning. So you know what you want to achieve. You know how you'll feel when you've fulfilled that wish, when you've reached that goal. You've identified what some of the obstacles are that might hold you back. 
or that could be stumbling blocks for you on your way to achieving that. And the planning part here is where you decide what you can do to overcome your obstacle. And you're gonna define at least one effective action you can take or an effective thought you can think to overcome your obstacle, okay? And this is where being really specific can be helpful. Now, if you're going through this and you're like, I came up with three obstacles, Christine, then you can come back and come up with a plan for each one of those obstacles, right? Um, but this is where you really wanna to tackle how you're going to do this. And the more specific you can be, the better. So we gave you uh, this kind of fill in the blank framework on your, your worksheet and I'll put it up on the slides now. But basically you want to structure this as saying, if obstacle, then I will do this thing to overcome it. So I'm just gonna make up an example right now. Let's say my wish is that I am someone who, I don't know, jogs 10 miles a week. I'm someone who jogs zero miles a week. So this is an ambitious wish for me. Um, so if I say my wish is to be someone who jogs 10 miles a week, um, my, I guess my outcome is that I will feel great, I will have energy, I will be healthy, um, I will feel confident or empowered that I'm taking care of my health in, in this very hands-on way through my habits. Um, the obstacle that I might run up against is all of the things that I tell myself that would prevent me from doing that. So one of them might be um, if the weather is not great, if it's too hot, too cold, too rainy, I'm not gonna wanna get out of my bed and go for a job. Um, another obstacle that I might say is like, who's gonna watch my kids while I go for this jog, right? Or maybe my obstacle is like, I don't have good shoes for jogging. It could be anything. But yeah. if I was just gonna pick one of these things then I could say like, okay, well, if it's, if my obstacle is the weather then I can create a plan for myself that's something like, if I decide that I'm gonna go running the next day then I will put my running clothes next to my bed. So they're the first thing I see when I wake up in the morning um, and that will help me do it. Or maybe I make a promise to myself, like if I don't feel like running, I'll give myself a treat when I come home. Like no coffee for you until you get home from your job, Christine, or something like that, right? Or if, um, if I wanna go for a run, then I'll arrange someone to watch my kids the day before. And then I'll have that commitment. I know someone is, planning to watch them. So I'll feel like there's no excuse for me not to go. So this might look at a variety of different ways for you, but a lot of times breaking it down this way can help you to have this plan. And if you say your plan sentence to yourself and deep down in your gut, you know that you're full of it and this is not something that you're actually committing to, but I would say like go a level deeper and ask yourself, is this really my main obstacle? Is, is this really the issue? So for me, all the things that I just threw out as my obstacles, maybe my coach would say, Christine, is this really your obstacle? And I might say, no, my obstacle is, I know I'm gonna feel terrible because I'm so out of shape. Like I don't even want to put myself in that situation. Or mm -hmm. uh, I used to think of myself as an athlete and I'm really uncomfortable with the fact that I can't run the way I used to when I was a teenager. So. The, the surface level obstacles that you come up with might not really be the one. You might have to keep chipping away at it and getting deeper and deeper. And that's impossible for us to do um, in this time frame with you. But I hope that it's a useful resource for you to be able to come back to in the future um, and apply to any goals, big or small, that you want to get clear on what they are and then also come up with action steps you can take to really get out there and conquer them. That was awesome. So that brings us to action. We're running tight on time. So just on this action step page here, from everything you've just thought about, decide what your first step is going to be. And this should be something that you can do today. Um, and so commit to when you're going to do it. 
Maybe you're gonna do it right when this webinar is over. Maybe you're gonna do it at the end of your work day, but give yourself a specific time. And if you want to, you can even drop it in the chat. Your first step or when you're going to do it, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Sometimes people do better with a little external accountability, um, but really decide for yourself when you're going to take this first action. And um, yeah, if it helps you to share your goal plan with somebody, do it, you can share it with us. <laughs> Reach yes. out to me and Christy. All of our contact information is in the packet. Um, but yeah, connect with someone who has similar goals as you, anyone who you think will help to hold you accountable or who, if you tell them your goal, you will feel responsible for following up on it. And that's a little bit different for each of us. All right. So please do let us know how it goes. And I want to, we have like four minutes left. I feel, Chrissy, I know I haven't really given you the chance to say anything for a couple of minutes, but um, is there anything that you want to add to, to getting into action before we open up for Q&A? Um, no, I just, though accountability is like a really big, big help for myself. So um, something that I, that I do, um, with goals, but also with like my daily schedule, I actually have like a Google sheet that's formatted so that I have a friend who's in a different time zone than me, but we still can see each other's schedule. And it's like, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to do this, but um, if you're interested in something like that, you can also like shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I can send you the template, but it's really nice to have somebody kind of do like doing the goal setting with you or doing the scheduling block scheduling with you because um, I don't know, you can just, you can keep each other motivated. Um, and it's so much easier to, to stick to a goal when, when somebody else is looped into that accountability, but because I think it's very easy for us to like give our own excuses to like put something off and do it later. So Absolutely. yeah, find a buddy. <laughs> Absolutely. And if it's hard for you to get a friend or a family member to hold you accountable, Find a coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agree. Sometimes that separation, that that third party element can can be really helpful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we didn't leave as much time for questions as I had originally thought. I get excited about this stuff. Um, maybe a little carried away with the time. So I, I realized that some people may need to jump out. Just a reminder that the recording will be available. Um, but are there any questions that we can answer beforehand. Let's see. Whoops. Did that. Change this. Let me fix this. Yeah, feel free to drop it into the Q&A or the chat as well. There's a question about the, the difference between mission and vision and which one is more important to have or be clear on. Dominic, this is tough and it might be a difficult one for us to, to get all the way into um, in this session. I think that the difference between mission and vision might really vary on the person and how they define those terms. I don't think from my perspective, there's one fixed definition of mission and one fixed definition of vision. Um, vision to me sounds a little bit more like, um, I don't know, like what you imagine things to be like, whereas mission sounds a little bit more like what you would do to achieve that. Um, and maybe it's a bit of a, a chicken and the egg thing. Um, I'm sorry that maybe that's an unsatisfying answer, but but I think that that might be one that needs a little bit more um, digging into than I think, unfortunately, we'd have the time to, to really fully validate today. <laughs> yeah, I think I too, I would just add that like, it's it's helpful to, to remember that um, just because you set out like this, this plan, this you want to execute this huge plan. Um, there are ways that you can 
you can work on something that's really structured and have a lot of goals set out that fits under your umbrella, whether that's your vision or your mission, whichever one is your core kind of um, the thing that stays with you the most. So no matter what career path you are going on, if you're changing industries even, or if, um, if it seems like your goals have to completely change to achieve something else, as long as your, your internal kind of like drive or what it would mission or vision, as long as that's staying constant, I'm a strong believer that you can, you can change the things underneath when you know where you're going. So it could be more like directional. Um, so just keeping in your lane, in your vision lane, if, if you will. Um, so you can kind of work on both um, at the same time and don't get too caught up on one or the other, because I think it is a little bit restrictive to, um, to kind of tell yourself you can't do something because it doesn't align with what your original vision or mission was because everything is, is fluid and we're always changing, right? So that's kind of what I would, would add to that. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the question of how to get in touch with us, um, Christy, do you want to tackle that first? Share your contact info? Oh, it, yeah. It's sure. at the bottom of the, the workbook as well. You can click on the links for our social media and our websites and things like that there. But do you want to just walk people through it, Christy? Yeah. So um, as far as, as I am a huge fan of Wall and Case, I think they're amazing. And I think Christine is a wonderful coach. Um, I will say, though, to clarify the type of coaching that I work on, um, I work with people in, in three month containers, one on one sessions. And if you're interested in, in kind of learning a bit more of what that journey looks like, um, I work uh, more often with um, people who are in a trans the career transition or thinking about one. Um, and so there's a link here. If you are familiar with Calendly, it's really simple. You click on it, you find a date. These are, um, this is, this is here for you if you want. Otherwise, um, I'm also on LinkedIn and you can find me there and would love to yeah, chat with anyone if anyone wants to learn about what it is to, you know, talk with a coach. Absolutely. And from, from my part, um, I offer coaching internally to wall and case employees, but um, externally, you can contact me through LinkedIn, um, christineayuzawa.com or through Instagram. And I'm happy to talk um, with anybody on, I don't know, coaching a bit more general um, through any of those contact points as well. Let's see. Um, there's a question in the Q&A, Christy, about um, career changing. This, Tetsu, this, this question I think is kind of on, on the line between coaching, um, and maybe recruitment um, processes a little bit. So um, I think that, that this is, is a tough one um, to, to give you a hard answer for because it depends a little bit on what the industry is. If you, if you are working with a recruiter, you're interested in insight um, on tech jobs, in the gaming industry, things like that. I do know that this all falls under the umbrella of wall and cases coverage as well. Um, and that speaking with a recruitment consultant who's specialized in that industry will be able to give you the best information as to what is really expected right now in the market. Because some technologies and some industries are really new. So having many years of experience might not necessarily be relevant, but there could be um, related experience that transfers really well. Um, so maybe in terms of what is expected for certain jobs, a recruitment consultant could give you a little bit more feedback on what would help you to pass the job screenings. Yeah, and I think it might be interesting. I don't know if you use LinkedIn very much, but um, for those of you who do use LinkedIn, if you're ever thinking about changing um, a, an industry, a lot of times what I like to do is look up people who kind of have keywords from both the industries. So the one that I'm in and the one that I want to get into, and you can sort of see where, what kind of trajectories people have taken their career in. Um, and you'd be surprised, I think, to see that there are people who do change, but there's something beneath the surface under that LinkedIn profile that maybe you aren't seeing. And so then reaching out to that person through LinkedIn, sending a little um, private message, kind of asking them, hey, how did you do this? Because I want to do this too. And mm -hmm. it's always worth, I think, asking people um, about their career changes too. Yeah, that's a really good point.
Yeah, and Brian's available to be reached out to <laughs> as well. He dropped his LinkedIn in there. Yes. Have we missed any questions along the way, Brian? Maybe if there's anything that um, that we might have missed, please bump it back up for us. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, we ended up running a little bit long, uh, but it's just because we're excited. If you want to talk to Christy or I for hours and hours more about goal setting or coaching, then you can find us <laughs> really anywhere because this is what we'll be talking about in a lot of the places. You can find us on, on LinkedIn and Instagram and, and all those different places. Um, happy to follow up with your questions. Again, if you are looking for a little bit of outside accountability. If you have questions about anything that we discussed today, you can reach out to either one of us for, for clarity or follow up on that as well. Um, we really appreciate you, you spending this time with us. And if it's something related to, to recruitment, of course, um, please get in touch with your consultant at Wall and Case so you can contact me or Brian and we can help you get in touch with the right person there. Christy, what do you think? Yeah, no, this was fun. I hope that we can continue some of these conversations off screen as well. And thank you again to Christine and Andrea and Brian for having me today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And, you know, I hope we can continue to do more things like this. If you were here, if you watched the recording, if this was helpful to you and you'd like to see more webinars on, on this type of, of content in the future, please let us know. We, we want to provide as many resources as we possibly can to, to help everyone in the wall and case community to get out there and to you know live their best lives, whether it's career changes or, or just being more fulfilled in, in the work that they're doing. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us and hopefully we can be a resource to you as you go forward. And thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Christy. Thanks everyone. All right, have a great day, everyone. <laughs>